Hi everyone, my name is Karina. There's something happening with my camera, so if I keep looking at the viewfinder, I'm just making sure that I'm recording. I wanted to do this video for so long. In fact, I shot this video just last week, but when I started editing the video, I realized that I was out of focus, and I'm not gonna put a video out where I'm out of focus. So, here I am again. I'm making this video for anyone who is looking for a job from scratch, like you've never worked anywhere. I think this is going to be most helpful to you. I think if you're at university and you're like, wait, when I graduate, how am I gonna find a job? You might find some of these helpful. And definitely if you are working a job you don't like right now, you might find this helpful as well. So yeah, let's, let's get to the meat of this video. The title is just how to find a job in 2023. This is a subject I'm very passionate about for many reasons. The first one being I haven't always been lucky enough to work a job I love with people I love. Okay, maybe I'm being dramatic, but I love my colleagues. My colleagues are fun, interesting people. I really love the job that I work. I love working at a job where I feel like I make a difference in some way. I love being helpful. I find joy in being helpful. And so seeing as I wasn't always here, I thought I'd share my unemployment history. To kind of help someone understand how I went from like unemployed to employed and just picking up work ethic and courage to keep going in terms of always finding a better opportunity. So in 2011, yeah, 2011 I finished high school and I didn't do so well. So I had to rewrite my grades. I got less than 30 points. I want this close because it's so embarrassing, but I, I had to rewrite some of my subjects. And while I was staying a year down, I decided I'm going to get a job. And so I did. By the way, I might look here sometimes because my notes are over here. But I got a job working as a personal assistant uh, assistant to an insurance broker in Angodiba, my hometown. Yeah, jeez. Um, my hometown. So um, I used to walk 30 minutes to get to my first job, guys. I earned $1,000. And... You know, I didn't know better, but I, I love that I could make my own money. I love, I've always loved that feeling of like having my own money. So that was like my year down. So the following year I went to university, I didn't work at all. In my second year, I got a job. I didn't get a job per se. We had to work for NGOs. So we volunteered. Our department forced us to volunteer at an NGO. And so we did. And so we, we got the chance to like apply ourselves and apply what we were learning in our course at like a real life workplace, which was nice. In my third year, in my third year, I worked at Frank Berm Studio. They are an architecture slash furniture studio. Yeah. Um, I worked for a German guy. He was pretty cool. I worked for a German guy mind you he's one of the people that actually worked on the, the 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 we called it what i can't recall the whole grow more thing they worked he worked on it so i was like oh my god you're so cool you're working on something that i get to like go back home to so i really like that guy um and then in my fourth year i taught english online to like asian students that was really fun uh, so at my internship in my third year, I got like maybe $2,000 and I remember like asking my mom to not send me any pocket money anymore because I was like, oh, I have a job now, I'm getting paid two grand. And then in my third year when I taught English online, I got paid about $3,000 maybe, maybe 3.5. Yeah, that was my fourth year. And so after that, I came back home. And when I came back home, <laughs> I came back home in December of 2016. And so coming into 2017, I was thinking, oh, I've graduated now, I'm a big deal, I'm gonna get a job. And I quickly realized that that's not how it works in the real world. Like being a graduate with very little job experience, no one wants to hire you because it means they have to teach you everything. And so I was like, crap, I actually have to start somewhere. And so I did. Um, I ended up working, I ended up finding a job like in March of 2017. But that was after I sat at home for two months, January and Feb, sending emails out to companies and looking for a job. 
And then when I realized that no one was responding to my emails and job applications, I was like, wait, I actually have to be proactive and get out there and find a job. And so I'm going to share some tips with you. Um, some of them are like, it's a mindset thing, right? Like it's things you need to apply in your mind and act on in your mind. And then the rest are just like very practical. How will you actually find a job? And so the very first tip I'm going to tell you is you need to remember that no one owes you anything. You like always keep this at the back of your mind. I think I've been living my life with that mindset for a while now. But I realized that no one was going to help me find a job or it wasn't in anyone's interest to help me find a job. Put frankly. Um, everyone is living their own life and everyone is so preoccupied with their own situation. Trust me, no one is waking up and thinking, how am I going to help Karina find a job in that moment? Honestly. So not to say no one bothered to help, but like obviously they're not going to give it their all like I was going to give it my all. So the first thing first, take accountability for your own life and realize that no one owes you anything and you need to do this yourself and you're gonna have to give it your all if you want results so that's the first thing i'm gonna share that's the that's my first tip no one owes you anything my second tip is that you need to be humble so again that's like a mindset thing but being humble in this instance refers to just realizing that when you are starting out no job should be beneath you like don't ever feel like wait i have a degree why should i work as a personal assistant why should i work like don't think anything is beneath you because you have zero job experience and so because you have no job experience no one is really eager to hire you and so starting at the bottom helps you to build up some skills you know some experience and that way you become more attractive to like your future employers um, there is the exception to the rule. I like to say this only because there's someone who's going to think, yeah, but I know someone who went to university and graduated and got a job right away. That person is lucky, is what you should be telling yourself. Because for majority of people, and I know people now who have amazing jobs and are managers or whatever, but like they started at the very bottom. And so, guys, let's get out of this la la land. <laughs> You have to start out at the bottom. I think anyone who has a really decent job now will tell you that they didn't always have a decent job. They had to start at the bottom. Um, so starting out, take on any job while you look for the next job. Tip number three, guys, have a nice CV. By a nice CV, I just mean don't have a four-pager. No one is going to read your four-page CV. No one has the time. So create a CV. Um, so like I think for someone who has maybe zero job experience, have a two pager. Do not put your photo on it, please. Remove your photo. That might actually work against you. Remove the photo of your CV and write about yourself. Tell them about the person that you are. So write down about your education. Um, give them an idea of like, how do I describe this? Like, write what you're competent in. What are your core skills? What are you very good at? Uh, mention in there what that you can use Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. and Like, write important, significant things in your CV that are important. Whether you're single or married, nobody really cares. Um, what your hobbies are. I don't know if anyone cares about that. But, like, be to the point. And it shouldn't even be difficult, guys. We we spend so much time online watching videos about things that are unimportant. Please do research on how to write a really good, professional, decent CV. And also, don't be emailing your CV. Actually, that's part of like my next point, but emailing is, is a bad way to approach employers. Um, I have here LinkedIn. I was going to say that I I haven't been able, I have I don't know many people who've been able to find a job using LinkedIn, so I don't know how to advise anyone on that. Um, about like, but I think you can look it up, how to approach recruiters on LinkedIn. 
um, in some industries that could really really work for you because we are moving away from like the traditional way of things so do your research on how you can find a job on linkedin and start approaching recruiters let me know how that goes because i don't know many people who've done that successfully i know like one girl um and another thing i wrote down here is just like when you are applying for a job don't use the same cv for every job application so look at what they are looking for at a certain job don't lie on your cv but try to highlight the skills that you have that they are looking for for that specific job because that way you instantly seem like a match and you can be shortlisted for an interview uh, my fourth tip i think i kind of went into this one but my fourth tip is that you need to get out of the house you need to dress like you're going to a job interview and you need to go and approach employers i should mention that a lot of companies do not have the budget to be advertising like newspapers um so you need to look at maybe joining a vacancy group i think those are very popular now i used to be a part of a vacancy group when i was looking for jobs but be a part of like a vacancy group that way you get screenshots of all the jobs either appearing in newspapers or social media um, pages but know what's out there and then what you should actually do and maybe emailing works i think it might work for some people but i would say the best approach is to walk into the office where you want to apply for a job and ask for the person who's hiring so that you can give them your cv or just make the effort by showing up is what i'm trying to say like don't send the email you could probably send the email but i think you're better off going to the actual place oh my battery is running out but i must get through this so go to the place where you are seeking seeking employment and hand them your cv and yeah i I think that that's way more practical and I'll tell you a little quick story but when I was looking how I got my first job when I got back actually I worked as a personal assistant to the store manager at uh, a retail shop in Maromo I dressed up I used to do this all the time but I would dress up and have my CV and walk into places and be like hi my name is Karina I'm looking for a job I recently graduated but I have no I don't have much working experience outside of teaching English or working at NGOs um, or doing an internship so I want to learn some skills and I'm looking for an opportunity and I would hand them my CV sometimes I'd be like can I speak to the HR manager and they'll be like no sometimes they would be like yeah it's fine we'll keep your we'll take your CV at reception but like I walked into the retail shop I'm speaking about where I worked and I literally said to them, can I speak to, this, to the manager? And they're like, yeah, sure. And they pointed her out to me and she happened to be on the this, the floor of the store. And I walked up to him and, I, and I, I introduced myself and I was like, I'm just looking for a job. And here's my CV. And if anything comes up that I might be suitable for, please give me a call. And I swear to you, she loved this so much. She told me later, the only reason I hired you was because I had never seen someone walk up to me with so much courage and confidence. Um, and so I got the job as personal assistant to the store manager because I walked in there, I had the confidence, and she liked me as a person. Um, so yeah, um, do that. Go to places, <laughs> dress like you're going to a job interview, and give them your CV. I would advise you to go between a Tuesday and a Thursday on Mondays. People are tired from the weekend. On Fridays, people are looking forward to the weekend. So go between Tuesday and a Thursday, maybe around nine o'clock to 12 o'clock and see how far you get with your walk-ins. Dress professionally, obviously. Don't wear jeans and a t-shirt. That's not gonna work. Um, and make an impression. I think having some confidence about you or having a really great attitude smiling uh seeming eager you know helps i mean if you walk in there and you look like sad and desperate it's not a very good look but like 
I'm just saying, work on your attitude when you are going to go in, like, and approach employers. Uh, tip number five is talk to your friends and family about your situation. Um, I'll share another experience. When I was looking, when I got kind of tired, like, of working odd jobs, like, at this point, I had worked as a personal assistant to the store manager. I had worked at a call center. I got to a point where I was like, I want a job in my industry or I want more, but like, it seems like I've exhausted kind of any way that I could get another job. I spoke to a family member and mind you, I didn't go in like a self pity type way. I just said to her, you know, hi, um, like in the conversation, I was just like, by the way, I'm looking for a job in like public relations and marketing. So if you hear anything, because I know you are like in that world, please like let me know if you hear anything. And so I'm encouraging you to walk up to a family member or a friend that works in the industry in which you want to work in. They might know of vacancies at either their companies or another company in that same industry. And they'll be able to either like recommend you or tell you about it so that you can apply almost immediately. So um don't be ashamed to kind of tell people what you're looking for i think i mentioned this at the beginning of the video but everyone is so self-consumed that everyone is so consumed with their own life and what they have going on that they might not necessarily know even i will tell you this one thing i don't know what all my cousins study i don't know where they work like i don't know what they're looking for if they're looking for anything so be the person who's proactive enough and humble enough to walk up to people who you know care about you and tell them what you are looking for so that if anything comes up they can give you a shout a shout yeah they can they can tell you about it um and so actually yeah the friend that i did speak to and i told her what i was looking for i said to you she came back to me like three weeks ago and said i know someone who's looking for someone in marketing and PR, you should contact who who and give them your CV. And I did get a job offer. So I know it might seem like I'm just talking out of my bum here, but I, I actually, I can relate to some of the advice that I'm giving you that was helpful for me. Um, tip number six, last but not least, when you eventually give get the job give it your all and look for the next one so i think it's very important to practice gratitude right and contentment um the way this applies to this tip is just when you are at the job where you're at even though you're not happy and it's not where you want to be have a great attitude you know work really really hard give it your all because if you have any chance of getting your next job it would help if you can list where you currently work so that when they give them a call and say hey we are considering hiring karina for this job she says she works with you guys they are gonna say nice things about you so it's, it's never really personal you know you you need to be able to list your current employer on your cv so that you can score the next job. If they are good people and you do a really good job and you're a good person, likely they'll recommend you or say very nice things about you. So while you are where you are, be good. Like be an amazing employee and that increases your chances of the next person wanting to hire you. Um, I think I've reached the end of this. Um, but in short, don't don't let the depression or the sadness of not having a job i don't know consume you i need you to pick yourself up i need you to be courageous i want you to be confident i need you to be strategic i need you to get out there and find your first job or your second job but don't sit at home and let things happen for you you know i often hear stories about people who've been unemployed for like many years and it makes me sad but i think there is a part of that person that might be applying the wrong pressure to the situation like maybe you are trying but are you being strategic are you being confident so change things up 
um, work on your mindset and get into the job market. I'm getting emotional because, yeah, I don't know. I recently saw an article, and I think I spoke about this with someone, but there was an article where they were looking for people to do the census jobs. It's a temporary job, I think. And I don't know how many thousands of jobs there are available for the census thing, but over a hundred thousand people apply for these jobs. And that made me so sad because, yeah, it's 2023 and our economy is growing as a country. So I can't understand why there aren't enough jobs. Okay, we know why there aren't enough jobs, but we also need to put ourselves out there and, you know, find the first thing in order to get the second thing and the third thing and whatnot. Anyway, let me go finish painting my place, guys. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. I know this is a long one, but like, thank you for sticking around. I'm going to be back with a fun video. Uh, I don't know in what sense it will be fun, but I don't want to do something as serious as this. Like, I'm so emotional now. Um, but yeah, anyway, have a good day. Please share this video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Um, yeah, and subscribe if you haven't. Like the video if you haven't. I think it helps to get YouTube to like recommend it to other people if like you like the video. Yeah, I think so. And if you subscribe. So yeah, anyway, have a great September, guys. All the best. And yeah, stay happy, guys. Stay happy. Anyway, let me go. Bye.